to train the new generation of scientists because uh, um, the mission of the American Chemical Society is to advance science and many other societies, of course, and especially to publish good science, which is very well practiced. And so, um, as Giovanni anticipated, maybe Giovanni again she put this up. Uh, maybe it's not covering the screen. Oh, I don't know. So that's one. Okay. And so, um, I'm here uh, in my capacity of editor of the Journal of Medicine and Chemistry, actually uh, looking uh, at the name of many of the participants here and given the speakers so far, many of them are well recognized authors and given the reviewers of the Journal of Medicine and Chemistry. And uh, I'm one of the associate editors, and we are a lot, it's quite a big editorial board and uh, very diverse, even in terms of national. Of, of geography and uh, the super editor here is Craig Lindsay. He's located in the US. He's amazing. He's working a lot for the journal, and I'm there since uh, it's my it's my ninth year, so I'm there since long time, almost stepping down because it's not possible to stay to be an editor for more than ten years. So maybe that's why he selected me rather than the two of you. Just because of seniority. <laughs> so, uh, okay, the journal is well recognized. It's, uh, of course, Center of Medicine and Chemistry, which I believe is also one of the topics of a lot, because you are doing, uh, we are, you are doing it with a lot study, which is a, a truly hot topic in medicine and chemistry. Uh, maybe one of the next. Uh, um, Special issue could be dedicated to a lottery, why not? But uh, there are several others ongoing at the moment. But let's now uh, focus on the aim of my talk. So, to explain you the 10, the ten tips that could be useful for, your, uh, for writing your publication. Uh, first of all, uh, I'd like to say that. Uh, you as a student, you cannot maybe plan your Bible until you have a published paper. At least uh, it is uh, it works in many PhD programs, and I believe also this will be the case for a lot. But we should always remember that the scholarly publishing is focused on the advancement of science. So. Please always remember that when you start to write an article, okay, you are writing it for yourself because you need the paper. This is not the main reason behind that. You want to advance science, you want to share the science with your peers because you want that your size, science is made better by the interaction with your peers. So please always remember this, which is the right, the right move to accept the, this uh, quite complex uh, system. So, first, before I start, we want, uh, I want to let you use the same language. Maybe many of you have already published papers, but some of you maybe not. And so, the anatomy of the manuscript is composed by this Eight parts, the title, the abstract and the thought, the introduction, result and discussion, conclusion, references, supporting graphics, and the experimental session. Uh, doesn't matter which journal you are publishing in, but basically these are the main components of the paper. And uh, here now I will go through these different parts and by focusing one by one, I will try to discuss some peculiar features that can help you while writing your paper. And uh, this is uh, this material as made by the American Chemical Society and uh, in a program which is called NCS on Campus. 
because uh, the American Universal Society, as I said before, uh, want to reach all the new generation of scientists. So they are organized this event all over the world. So today we will have this mini event here. And uh, so these are the tips that several editors are collecting that we can go together. And uh, let's start by the first one. So first, create a useful outline. So maybe a kid uh, as an Italian uh, student, when we write the case, uh, Danny, whatever it's called uh, in Italian, we are not used to make outlines. At least uh, this is not something that uh, it is, we learn uh, at school. But in other parts of culture, especially in the British culture, it's very basic when you write an essay to write an outline before. So I think it's always uh, very good in the case of an article. So first thing, you should collect the data. Okay, this is fundamental. So please remember to collect all the data. Do not try to select the data because some of them you like more, some you don't like them, so but in any case, collect all the data and then ask typical questions which are typical as I said of the essay. So you should uh, try to reply to questions like why, what and how. And once you are done, you should organize the data by importance and not by time. So maybe you can the, the risk of uh, just saying, oh, this is uh, the value of data, let's put the beginning. No. Try to put them in order by starting uh, by the most important one. And then, when you add a little bit of the picture, then you can uh, evaluate the need for creating useful figures. This is fundamental. Try to draw very good, high quality. Figures, it's so important, but it's not something that you learn when you start. It is something that comes with time. But the figures are a fundamental part of a manuscript uh, because they can, uh, can give you the visual impression of the manuscript. And so they put a lot of care in that. In the, and then, uh, especially if it's your first experience, try to have uh, always uh, this uh, kind of behavior. Uh, don't, don't have the fear to ask to your peers. The outline is very good to share even with your colleagues, but not only your co-supervisor, but even uh, the people that are working on with you at the bench, or maybe those that, that are inside the network, in this case, because it's very important to have the feedback of your, your outline very soon in the process. And then be also very timely. So, second thing, choose your journal carefully. This is, of course, an advertisement from the American. I said that since the beginning, so you know my conflict of interest, it's very clear. So there are several journals here. And so, for example, even if you are in a business setting, maybe you should make the, the choice between two journals, because there are two journals dedicated specifically to business characters. Do you know their name? The first one, I already presented, okay. And then the second one, very good. Uh, <laughs> you are the right track, SCS, medicine, and it's letters. So, why you should publish uh, in JAMSAM or in SCS, different kinds of letters? Because of the impact factor could be the result, but not just for that. Because letters, uh, by Looking at the name, letters are different type of publication with respect to full articles. So it's very important that you understand not only the community, because the community for the two journals are the same, but 
even uh, the, the manuscript type that they accept. So this is something that could be useful. And uh, it's very good you know, when you decide for a journal, even uh, to check uh, the open access needs. Because you are working for a European project, so all the publications should be open access. We know that. So when you make your selection, consider that. And also, it's very good uh, to make the definitive choice to look at related uh, research publishing that journal. If this journal is publishing something similar, of course, not the same, because you should advance the thing. But it's publishing something similar. So this is a very good point for going for that tool. Okay, this is something uh, maybe not very funny. At least I'm always uh, fighting with my PhD students with that. Because uh, as soon as you have selected a journal, then you have to read the guidelines. There is no other way. Maybe it's boring. I know you. I know that you don't read even uh, all, all the text of the email you receive. Okay. We know you are a completely different generation. But you should go through the very long uh, author guidelines. Because all the information you need are there. So we try, we know that. So we, as an editorial board, we always revise the uh, author guidelines. We try to make, to shrink them as much as we can. But you know, okay, everything should be there. So please read the, the guidelines very carefully. Why do say that? Because, for example, there are uh, prerequisites sites to publish in a certain journal. So do you know which is the prerequisite site for publishing in journal medicine and chemistry, for example? If you don't have that, you cannot publish there. So no way. Jamal, do you know? Characteristic uh, compound characterization. Yeah, but it should be more precise. There is another pre-record site, no, the, the, the. no, you know, I know this, you know, I'm, I'm talking to the students, not to you, Mark, or you. So, the students, this is a journal dedicated to medicine and science, so, so you publish their compounds with biological activity. So what is very important in terms of characterization, as John Mark was saying, and not the NMR, yes, of course, I suppose that you got an NMR if it's the right one, but which is very important for the biological activity in terms of characterization. Another good point. So, so you should read the journal of medicine and guidelines because you are not very well prepared. So it's 95% of purity. You cannot publish there if your compounds are not 95% pure. So, please read the list before, because otherwise you lose a lot of time, because you cannot really purify your compounds again, okay? So, and this would be different for the different students. Now, not only to repurify, then to detect. <laughs> Even longer, okay? So, uh, Number four, tell a story. John, could you give me a sign when I'm very when I'm close to the end? Okay. And uh, tell a story. This is very important. Uh, I bet that you when you read the paper, you see the difference between uh, just writing, just reading a, a paper, maybe where which is so and so. And when you are truly captivated by the paper, that you want to go to the end, because that paper is telling a story. So, of course, it's difficult, but here there are some items that you can follow. So, first, identify your main team. And 
explain why the problem is important, and then provide context to part of the interaction. So please don't make it a trivial error that you don't know the, the context of your PhD project, of your PhD research. I say to my students, you are working on that project, you should know everything of that, much more than me. So please follow the literature on that topic very well, very carefully. And so when you present your results, you should put your results in the context of the previous literature. Because this is not only bad, but it's only unethical. Because we should advance the science. Remember the beginning. The main aim is to advance the science. So what you are doing should be a step forward with respect to what is, it has been already published. And then the conclusion. The conclusions are very difficult because uh, some students tend to use the abstract to make the abstract the conclusion similar, but it's not the same. There is difference because the conclusion should summarize your main message, your main advance. And then we were talking about uh, with Adriana about uh, uh, reproducibility. So this is another important ethical point. So you should provide all the details so that the others can repeat your experiment. This is so important. Unfortunately, after an hour, we don't have time to talk about that, but it's very fundamental. And then in the end, try to analyze your data in an objective way. You know that sometimes you want to emphasize what you have, you know, because just because you love your data, you love your project, but please be careful. Don't oversell what you've done. And also uh, include the right balance of data. What does this mean? This means that the anatomy of the manuscript, so we have the main manuscript and the supporting information, which is a, a separate file. So, put in the main manuscript the most relevant data, and then if there are other data which are not maybe which are less relevant, you can use the supporting information, which is a very good way to tell your story in a more thorough way without putting too many information in the main manuscript. And then uh, do not use the acronym too much with respect to the DNA, NMR, or whatever. So, number five, draw graphics with care. Be clear and precise. Figures should contain real data, okay? I don't want to go back to that. <laughs> we all are very ethical. And then use color. This was different, for example, when I started to publish. It was considered not very good to use the colors, no, not very professional. But now colors are very good. So, for example, you can use, you can even use colors when you write the reaction. If you want to highlight the part which is uh, changing, which is reacting, you can even use colors for that. Or if you want to highlight the structure activity relationship, so use color even in this respect. And then, very important for the data, for the figures, the reporting data, that you include the error analysis. So, maybe this is something uh, that could be a little bit wrong, but let's look at this picture, students. Do you like this picture, this figure? This is a figure in a paper submitted to American Chemical Society, do you like it? No, of course. Yes, it's like no. But why? But it's what you don't like specifically. <laughs> many things. So, <laughs> there are so many things. Yes, it's so much crowded. Look at how many panels you have. 
12. So there are no definitely rule, but don't put more than six elements in a figure. This is a, a good mix because otherwise it's too crowded. And then there is no looking at, at the figure, you don't understand where you should start, which is the correct order to follow the, the images. And also there is another very bad uh, habit. Here, for example, you cannot even uh, read very carefully the what is written in Excel. So this is not good. So please try to ensure that what you what is in there, especially when you make different panels, you can read other things. Because otherwise there is no reason to have a one figure with several points. Okay. Attract the readers with a title and photography. So, um, from one of the very last meetings, and it was a board meeting, uh, we have decided that the title should not be longer than 20 words. I don't know what the one setting uh, is cut off. But <laughs> yes, 20 words is already a long title. Okay, so try to be very concise in the title, but please, if you count the words, don't be longer than 20 words. And then select strong action verbs and avoid the overuse of adjectives and adverbs. So I have to blame myself because, especially when I was younger, before my experience as an editor, I liked a lot the word novel <laughs> in the title. And then I realized that you don't need the word novel because what you are publishing, of, of course, it's novel. So this. This is what we mean when we say try to avoid the uh, overuse of adjectives, okay, on different uh, adverbs. We will spend time with all about adverbs, even in the titles, but please avoid that. And then, this is to me a nice tip make your words resonate with the top graphic and include words for seal for search and engine and and organizers. So try to use to, mm, to have a distinct link between the title, what is in the table of context graphics. Do you know what the, the table of context graphics is? Ask it to the student, okay? So try to use, to, everything should be very well named. So the, the title, the keywords and uh, the talk. Avoid buzzwords, acronyms and abbreviation, if possible. And then avoid the potential untested application and how to justify things. This is very related to what I said before, no? You love your research, maybe you have even collected a good research. So maybe you want to publish a paper new allosteric uh, modulators for nicotinic receptors for summer disease. Okay? So please don't put Alzheimer disease if you have just tested the compounds uh, at the nicotinic receptors for just themselves. Okay? This means that uh, avoid potential untested applications. Because for anxiety, this means that we're already talking about the drug. Okay. And then uh, some specific tips uh, on the talk. So, to write the talk, maybe this depends on how creative you are. For example, to me, it's very nice uh, 
to think about talk. I, I like a lot to discuss talk with my students because it's very creative. But then, if you have no idea, write, she, write one, two sentences, look at the examples, and read the guidelines. And then, understand even the basics. Because the information should be a special form. So it should be in a kind of square sample. So you should know that. Because otherwise, you have even to rewrite the talk when your paper is accepted. And what about the quality originality? After all the standards, be professional. And also, always use a familiar software to eliminate errors. In the talk, there are many, many English errors. So check with the word tool, even the talk, because there, there are many, many errors. And then use the original and published artwork. And not even one of the figures, because you cannot use the same material for the figure for that. I will keep the plagiarism because it deserves to talk more than one hour itself. But you should avoid plagiarism, but especially self plagiarism, which is something that we neglect sometimes. And uh, This is very basic, but it's very important as a tip, as a suggestion. Revise the editorial work. So don't be frustrated if you are the 15th version of your paper, because it is normal. More you read, more you refine and rewrite, and this is so important. And even Revision are important part of the process and give all authors the time to support and edit the manuscript. So please don't spend, uh, when you are the final draft, don't spend to all the authors by saying, ah, oh, tomorrow I want to, to submit my paper to German pen. No, give to all the authors the time to read and revise your paper. This is unfair, but also even a issue. So it's very important to get the support for everyone. And even prepare the supporting information with care. Because sometimes you think, okay, but this is another file, no one will read it. But it is so important. So take time, the same time that you, that you uh, give to the main ones, it should also be given to the supporting information. Because there are sometimes I look at supporting information where there are still highlights with the pieces and so on, and this is so un unprofessional. And then uh, there is uh, also one specific class of the OCS on campus on writing a cover letter. I love even this part, so maybe next time on one of the editors can talk about how to write a cover letter. But I just want to highlight that. Address the editor in chief directly by name. And this is so important when you write a letter, it's a letter. You will never write a letter to a friend without putting the email, the name, the last name, or even a, a professor. And so take a look at what the editors, because in general terms, there was a very trivial error when there were the two editors, and people were, were addressing just one. This was even a very unpolite, not because the editors were too. And so, in any case, I look at that. And uh, yes, I believe that uh, my time is finished, but uh, I can leave the slides because these are part of the access of campus program. And even you can find additional resources here. If you have time, go through them. There is almost everything and I believe it's useful. And uh, I don't know if there is time for questions, but thank you very much, Giovanni, and the next work and all of you. Time for one question, maybe for the uh, Oh, yeah. Yeah, maybe. Uh, just one question. Who writes the paper? Who writes the paper? 
I believe the patient killed them. Why? The first draft. That's the way you see. Ah, we are talking about ch chat GPT and no, 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 no. Okay. <coughs> So this means that uh, the supervisor has to say. No, 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 no. So he is uh, usually, most of the time, in, uh, in fact, involved in the supervisor. Yes, and the supervisor, right. The student, of course, should start. Yes, but the way, uh, usually, the students have not the training, and uh, I think what you said is uh, very useful for them. But uh, you, you did not uh, discuss the, the relationship between the member of the team. Uh, very important, of course, because the supervisor should be the first one who teaches the student how to write the paper, because these are tips, but yes. as we say, that these are tips, it's half an hour, so this is something that should be done. What I usually do, the PhD student write the draft, okay, we do, uh, in our PhD program, we spend uh, 25 hours on a course which is dedicating to writing the paper, so there is an initial training for the student, but then, yes, Everything should be shared with the supervisor, which is the first teacher, not because it, it's the supervisor who teach to you how to write and always correct the first draft that you make. You know, these revisions, the 10, 15 revisions, this means that you are in interaction with your supervisor. So, this is, of course, so important. Yes, that's why the many questions you have mentioned this before. Thank you. Thanks, Maria Laura, for, for being with us. Thank you.